So I'm here with Professor Jack Richards in his beautiful summer home in Gisborne in New Zealand. Jack, thanks for talking to me about your new book, 50 Tips for Teacher Development, uh, published by Cambridge University Press just very recently. Now, if I remember correctly, I think the first time we had a conversation about uh, language teaching and teacher professional development was when you were in Hong Kong at City University. Well, uh, that was about 25 years ago, I think, and a lot has happened in our field in that time. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the changes as you see them in professional development over that time? Well, I think one thing is that far more people now are involved in English language teaching as English has become the global language, the, the world's second language, so that means a huge uh, number of more teachers involved, more teachers being recruited. Um, so the, the, the profession has expanded in that way. Um, at the same time, I think the, the field has become a lot more professional. The standards have, have uh, been raised, teachers are expected to know more, um, and quality teachers are needed to help institutions achieve their goals. And so there's pressure on teachers to keep up to date, to improve their professional skills um, and also pressure of uh, institutions to provide support for these, you know, many of these teachers who are entering the profession for the first time. So Jack, could we turn now to the uh, book itself? Could you tell us a little bit about how it came about? Cambridge University Press approached me about this book which is part of a new uh, series edited by Scott Thornbury of practical short books with uh, a lot of classroom application, in this case application to teacher training, and asked me if I'd like to be uh, involved in this project. And so we started by contacting lots of uh, teachers and teacher trainers to ask them for ideas about topics we can include, and gradually the, the project evolved, sample chapters were written um, and reviewed by, by teachers and teacher trainers, and so it, it took quite a long time to to reach the final, the final stage of publication. So, um, what were your main goals then in writing this book at this time? Well, to provide a variety of activities that could be used either by an individual teacher working on her own or his own, some that could be used uh, collaboratively with uh, another teacher or with a group of teachers, some that could be could provide a basis for institutional review as well as personal review. So a variety of activities that could serve the different kinds of teachers who are at different stages in their professional development in the language teaching field. So I'm um, curious about what kind of audience you had in mind. Was it for teachers or more for teacher trainers? We were thinking both of, of teachers who want to pursue professional development either on their own or through engaging with other uh, teachers or with um, trainers. So that is one audience for the book. Um, experienced teachers as well who might have been teaching for many years and want to look back and reflect on where they've come and where they need to go in terms of their professional development. And also for uh, trainers or program directors who are looking to um, implement activities for professional development in their own schools or institutions. So those would be the three kinds of audiences we were aiming at. Jack, I noticed that you've drawn on 50 tips for teachers in the book, and some, I think, will be more familiar to teachers than others are going to be. So could you tell us a little bit about the resources that you drew on when you were writing the book? Well, um, much of it was written when I was in the library at the Regional Language Centre in Singapore that has a very good uh, set of resources covering many different aspects of teaching and teacher development. So that was a, a very useful resource. And of course that centre is in itself a centre for teacher training. And so I've been associated with it informally as well as, uh, as on the staff there in the past for many years. So um, that was a great starting point and a great place in which to, to do the work. Uh, as well as through guidance by Scott Thornbury, who directed me to people I could talk to, 
gave me many ideas as well. And so, so the book evolved gradually through a sort of process of research and conversation with um, my editor and with other people that I spoke to as the process of writing continued. So I'd really be interested to know a little bit more about how you went about organising the book. Well, there was a constraint that, that they wanted these to be short, two-page tips, and um, it was quite difficult to to confine myself to those two pages. For example, you yourself have written many books, including a, a book on action research. I think your book is probably 250 pages, whereas I had two pages to cover action research. Um, so that was one of the one of the constraints to keep it short and practical, and and also so that uh, each tip would lead to application. So by the time the teacher had read or the trainer had looked at the mm -hmm. the, the nature of the the topic that's being talked about, whether it's being whether it was recording your own lessons or joining an action research group or joining a, an online virtual group, the idea was to lead the teacher towards uh, something he or she could do individually or collaboratively to apply the principles of that tip. So um, obviously teachers are at very different uh, stages of their experiences of teaching. So have you included activities for both experienced and more novice teachers in the book? There are. I mean the books, there are 50 um, tips grouped into 12 different sections and so um, the first set of tips, for example, uh, involve the teacher reviewing where they are in their professional development and where they would like to go. And then the activities are, uh, can be done by teachers working, uh, novice teachers and experienced teachers working together. So most often, if the tip involves collaboration, it, it often involves a novice and a more experienced teacher working together. So they're, they're sharing ideas and trying to resolve issues together. Mm -hmm. Well, as we know, technology has become such an important part of teaching and teacher development. So what kind of activities have we got in the book for the use of technology and the internet for teachers to support their teacher development? We have a, a series of a number, a number of uh, activities in the, in the book deal with uh, technology, either traditional technolo technologies such as filming or videoing or recording your own lesson or looking at recordings of other teachers lessons but we also describe how you can use wikis, join an online discussion group, a forum and so on. So we've tried to cover the range of possibilities that the internet and technology now make available. I think everyone's aware that it's not always that straightforward for teachers to just pursue professional development. What are some of the obstacles, do you think, for teachers to be able to continue their professional development during their careers? I think one of the commonest, of course, is time, that teachers are very busy and don't always have time to invest in teacher development. So to lessen the burden, if you like, most of the activities involve collaboration. Mm -hmm. So, and we also estimated the sort of time frame that would be required to do such an activity. So. When activities are shared, there's much less pressure, if you like, on the, than a teacher doing an activity individually. The other thing, of course, is support from the institution, that if institutions want teachers to engage in professional development, they need to uh, recognize how important it is, provide resources for teachers to use, um, things that they can read, time to uh, carry out these activities. And also I think institutions need to uh, reward teachers who invest in their own professional development by recognizing and acknowledging that these teachers have made a special effort and that should be you know, mentioned and, and uh, acknowledged. Jax, thanks so much for talking to me about this book today. I think it's a great resource, got lots of practical tips in it for teacher trainers, directors of studies, principals of schools and anybody who's going to be involved in teacher development. So. Thank you very much again for your time.